Hello and welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. I'm Jackson Bungani. On this episode of Red Carpet, we'll bring you the Met Gala, the International Jazz Week, and music and mental health therapy. Let's get on with the show. This year's biggest night in fashion, the Met Gala returned to its usual bath on the social calendar this year after the pandemic upheaval. And if it feels like one of those what already moments, well, it is. It's been just under eight months since the last gala, an annual fundraiser that raises eight-figure sums for the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute. Pre-pandemic, about 600 A-listers from fashion, sports, music, film, TV, technology, and beyond were invited. And this year and last year, the numbers were closer to 400. The 2020 gala was canceled. More than 16.4 million was raised last year and the event is the Institute's primary budget feeder. International Jazz Day is held on April 30th of each year, and this year, over 30 artists performed at an all-star jazz concert organized by the Harvey Hancock Institute of Jazz and UNESCO. It featured some African jazz giants like DRC's Ray Lemma and Senegalese singer and bass virtuoso Alun Wade plus a new group of women from West Africa. For jazz lovers, it was a full week of celebrations with tributes to many jazz legends around the world. Here in the US, Mozambican jazz singer Albino B told us that being recognized as an African jazz singer is still a challenge. Some jazz characteristics evolved. From its beginnings until now. I definitely feel that there's still some African rhythm to it, like the polyrhythmia. But in terms of context, I can't say that jazz is African, because in a way, it has distanced itself from Africa. It's very interesting when we look at the fact that, despite having African characteristics, I always feel like it's a challenge. As an African musician, in terms of style, they, that is American musicians, created what they call jazz. They created the genre. That, as much as we say, that is global, it's also very specific. It responds to some characteristics, and for us to be recognized, it's a big battle. So many Africans like me, it's a big challenge. For me, to be close to my culture, and I know that my culture wants to understand what you're saying, wants the vocal part. That's why I bring my voice to get that popularity jazz had in the beginning. So, I sing in my songs, and it also has improvisation. Now, even though the global COVID-19 pandemic is not officially over, life in many parts of the world is slowly returning to normal as governments continue relaxing or lifting pandemic-related restrictions. 
A study showed that due to restrictions like lockdowns and quarantines, many communities are dealing with increased depression, anxiety, distress, and other mental health challenges that are making it difficult for them to achieve a state of happiness and wellness. Melanie Edwards is an award-winning music therapist and multi-instrumentalist best here in Virginia. And she says that one of the solutions to combating mental health problems is through music. I think music is more important now than it's ever been because coming out of a pandemic where we've been isolated and struggling with all these challenges, it's a new way to connect that provides a forum of unity. What I mean by that is, before the pandemic, we may have felt even isolated within our communities in different ways. Now everybody is going through a collective experience and everyone's challenged under the same guise. The music pulls everybody out of those isolation zones and brings back a way to converse, to express, to enjoy, to experience life. Everybody loves a concert. Everybody loves to get together and sing around a campfire. People are all creative in that capacity. And, and music is the channel and a conduit to the other side. It's a way that we can all bring community back into a place where we can find commonality. I've just started working more in the realms of music as a healing modality. I've been a performer and a singer-songwriter on the stage for 28 years, but there has been something inside of me that has wanted to bring out more music as a service. And so I've developed this new way to try to help folks creatively cope using musical mending skills. I've always thought, and I still think today, that music and the art and creativity is not a gift, it's a birthright. That all of us have this natural ability to create. Since the beginning of this year, millions of people around the world have returned to work and children are going back to school. Many more are looking forward to getting out of the isolation and the return to social gathering events like concerts. However, as the pandemic we republic begins what has been described as a new normal, many are still dealing with the negative impact the pandemic has had on their mental health. One of the things about music that I think most resonates with me is its ability to unify and unite all of us globally. It is a language that is universal. Everyone knows music and everyone can relate to it. Everyone speaks music. And so when we're playing music in any art form, really, we're able to bring these portals and these new ways of life together as one. Mental health experts have always pointed to the benefits of music therapy to treat various forms of mental health conditions, including depression and anxiety. Melanie says that music is a medium for processing emotions, trauma and grief and can be used to heal the mind. There is proof that when we have music and dance and movement, music and movement pull out trauma. That ability to, to primarily get into these places where things are stored, it's a way out, a channel out. Because we can talk about things in a, in a way that may not be direct. And health doesn't help, mental health is not just a linear way, it's cyclic. You can heal in a cycle like a circle. And music is like that, it's vibrational, it's sonic, it's not direct line. And so by doing dancing and movement and music and these art forms, we're able to get these traumas out and collectively unify. <laughs> Melanie, who is about to embark on her first trip to Africa, says that since we all as a global family suffer together, we can use music as a shared language to heal together. We are going to Africa for the first time. We're going to start in Zanzibar, and then we're going to go into the Serengeti for a safari, and then to Masamara in Kenya. And one of the greatest daydreams and one of the, the biggest hopes that I've had, and I really hope it can manifest, I've always wanted to have an African choir behind my music, behind one of my songs, just kind of this filling of the space of just beautiful, gorgeous music and, and voices together. Um, so I'm going to put that out into the universe that, you know, hopefully that can manifest. But if not, I'm just really looking forward to the travels and the new experiences and then being able to bring that back and compose and make some albums out of that. A 
Nigerian exhibition, Art in Autism, is showcasing work from teenagers with autism to raise awareness of the condition in a country where diagnosed children are often shunned and kept behind closed doors. Here's more. An art exhibition in Lagos showcased work from teenagers with autism to raise awareness of the condition. 18-year-old Daniel Okoli was told that he was on the autism spectrum when he was four years old and he didn't speak until he was seven after years of therapy. It was also during the sessions that he discovered his love for art. He's now one of three teens whose artwork was on display in Art in Autism. It helped me to relax and it can be used for fun and recreation. Like every time when I come out from school upset, my art is the only thing that will make me happy. And, and I always use my imagination to use, to use inspiration of my art so I can bring it to a life. The two-week-long exhibition was organized by Pure Souls Learning Foundation and featured artworks created by people living with autism and advocating for their acceptance and inclusion. This is like the first time that I would see like children's talents really like channeled. People seeing them for things other than their disability. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like it's really beautiful. Like bringing out that part of them, realizing that they have other parts to them. Daniel says that he wants to use his art to help people with autism spectrum disorders. I want to inspire other children to become like me and other, and other artists who, who, want to, who want to make the same difference in their life because I know that they can do it without any difficulties. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought changes to the lives of many people and for some, new jobs. Michael Sullivan spoke with Max Miller, whose love for history and food led to a post-pandemic career as a YouTube creator. Exploring ancient recipes and testing them in his kitchen. One of Max Miller's favorites uses caraway seeds, fermented fish sauce, and other ingredients to recreate Parthian chicken a Persian dish from people who lived on the edge of the Roman world, or mussels prepared according to a recipe from a late Roman era cookbook. After about five minutes, take a look and if most of the mussels have opened, you're good to go. Miller's YouTube channel, Tasting History, has more than one million subscribers. Producing episodes is his full-time job, financed by YouTube advertising, donations from viewers, and commercial sponsorships. Miller used to work in marketing and distribution at Walt Disney Pictures, but was furloughed when COVID hit and his hobby, a cooking channel, became his job. Then I had plenty of time because I had nothing to do. Pastries from ancient to recent times. If he can find the recipe, he's willing to try it. This 4,000-year-old Babylonian recipe for lamb and beet stew produces a dish surprisingly like traditional Slavic borscht. And it's just interesting to see how these dishes, if they're good, persist throughout time. Other dishes are less to his liking, like a stew of pork and blood from ancient Greece. And here we are, Melos Zomos, Spartan black broth. Exploring history through food, the good and the bad. Food and history and, I, you know, I don't have a budget of any kind. I just sit at my kitchen counter in my too small to even film in kitchen and um, you know I did not think anybody would be watching but they are. With hundreds of thousands of viewers joining his culinary adventures. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Los Angeles. Thank you for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you for hanging out with me. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. Connect with us on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.